Hey there, I'm Eric. And I'm Eric. And we are Eric's Eric's drink drink whiskey. whiskey. And we have not been yet. We're just gonna mess that up every single time. (laughs) All right. Thanks everybody for joining us. It is our first episode for our unconventional, uncut, and unfiltered take on the world of whiskey. My name is Eric Simpson, and with me always is Eric Miller. Eric Miller, how are you? Fantastic. Happy Father's Day, Eric. It is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to me. Happy Father's Day to your father, Mr. Ed Miller. And your father as well. Thank you. Well, tonight we're going to talk about a couple of goodbyes uh, if you're just starting out for some good daily drinkers. Um, I think these picks will be a good start to your collection. Um, or if uh, you're already uh, having an established daily drinker, be something good to add to your rotation. Uh, so please stick around and see what we've got in store for you. All right, so Eric, what do we have on uh, what do we have on deck tonight? Uh, I know we wanted to uh, get some folks uh, started with some daily drinkers without paying a whole lot of money. So That's tonight, right. yeah. So tonight we're going to be trying Jim Beam Bonded and Jim Beam Repeal Batch. Right now, just to point out, there's a lot of great offerings out there uh, below the. $30 a bottle price point. Um, and they're all from labels that you might turn your nose at because you got sick on them in high school or college or whenever. Um, so we're talking like Evan Williams, Jim Beam, uh, as Eric mentioned, Wild Turkey, all have solid uh, contenders for a daily drinker well below the $30 uh, price point. Um, but we just felt that out of that group, Jim Beam has a really solid lineup of, of products um, actually below the $20 mark. Um, so the Jim Beam Bonded, uh, they also have a Double Oak um, and a Jim Beam Black Extra Aged. And then, of course, the Repeal Batch um, are all at that $20 uh, below mark. Um, so Eric rattled off a couple different names there. Bonded, um, I mentioned the Extra Age, Double Oak, um, you can learn a lot about what's actually in your bottle from what's just on the label. Um, give me an instance here. The Jim Beam Bonded means that it's in accordance with the Bottled and Bond Act of 1897. Um, little history lesson. But, first. But Eric, what is that? Well, that's the first truth in advertising legislation. Uh, championed I'll by, be damned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it wasn't with your food or it wasn't with your drugs. It was with your whiskey. Uh, a lot of folks were getting sick because a lot of corners were being cut. Uh, so what bottled and bond means, it means that the mash bill started out as 51% corn. Now that's the, the group of grains that are used to ferment and distill the spirit. For a bonded um, bourbon. For a bonded bourbon. Right. Uh, it's aged in a new charred oak barrel for at least four years is the product of one distilling season. Uh, So if it doesn't say single barrel, you know that it all came from the same batch of liquor that was distilled in fall or spring of whatever year. Um, And you know that the bottle you're getting is gonna be 100 proof or 50% alcohol. Um, That's the the basic gist of uh, the Bottled and Bond Act. We'll dive deep more and do a Bottled and Bond episode and kind of get into the little more of the nuances of how that law came to be and kind of where where and where how and when it has affected whiskey today um so that's every bottle and bond whiskey you see you know it's going to be at least four years old it's 100 proof uh, additionally you know double oaked as eric mentioned 
that's the whiskey that's been placed into another uh, charred oak barrel for, you know, for some initial aging um, after its, you know, first inception. Uh, it's going to give a whiskey a little more bolder, smoky flavor than a normal bourbon or a rye. Uh, and then extra aged, as we mentioned with the, the other uh, Jim Beam bottle, is uh, it's just had a little more time in the barrel. Um, so it's going to pull in a little more of those barrel flavors, those barrel sugars, and some of that, uh, that uh, nice oak flavor. Um, now, Eric, you can get a pretty good deal of information just looking at the label, too, can't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And both of these are uh, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskeys. Uh, that means their mash bill was at least 51% corn. Uh, the remainder is usually a mix of malted barley and rye, sometimes wheat, which in, in all actualities, too, it's any, any grain you can you can use and it can still be classified as a bourbon um you know it doesn't it doesn't have to be or after after the 51 percent corn because they because i know there's a couple of distilleries have tried oats uh they've tried some they tried rice uh but all that can still be considered a bourbon as far as my knowledge is concerned as long as they use as long as it is a uh, a certain it is it is a grain pr uh, product that they can use um so with that being said, uh, that also means they were aging in a new charred oak barrel uh, for at least two years. That's uh, that gives it the straight, and of course, bottom to bond designation, as you had mentioned, adds some additional stipulations. Now, just by reading the label in general, we just said that being a straight whiskey, uh, the straight whiskey means it's at least two years old, and by law, if it is under four years old, they have to tell you how old it is in some form of in some form or uh, fashion on the label. So if it's three years old, they'll say it's uh, 36 months or they'll say it's three years old. Um, but if it does not have an age statement on it of any sign and it says Kentucky straight, you know, it's at least four years old. And just reading the label on my bottle of repeal batch, there is no age statement. So that means it's four years old, right, Eric? That means it is at least four years old. It means, um, from what I have done research on uh, the Jim Beam Repeal Batch, they did say that it was roughly five to six years old. But like I said, that's strict. That's strict from uh, word of mouth from the distillery, and it's not on the bottle. So there's probably some four year in there, you know, but that, that's just kind of how that works. We're at the liberty of what they say and what they cannot put on the bottle. All right, then let's jump right into uh, these samples that Eric and I have poured right in front of us. Um, before we begin, I just want to note that both of these uh, we're drinking tonight. Uh, Eric and I bought and paid for them with our own hard earned money from our local liquor stores. Uh, we have not been provided any samples for the purpose of tonight's show. So without further ado, Eric, why don't you jump in and tell us about our first sipper. So our first one is going to be Jim Beam Repeal Batch. This is your bottle right here. Has a nice, good little marketing scheme, um, you know, from the you know the nineteen nineteen twenties. When uh, when was the actual actual twenty uh, first amendment? So nineteen twenty eight. Around there, about you're barking up the wrong tree. I know when it was repealed. <laughs> Yeah, okay, there we go. All right, so um, just a little bit of quick quick uh, label reading. It's non-chill filtered. Uh, what that means is is um, usually if you chill filter if you chill filter it at a low proof, uh, usually if it's if it turns uh, if it gets a little cold colder as far as the temperature going down, some people like to chill their whiskey. If they don't chill filter it, there's a lot of like um, fats, proteins, and lipids that are kind of just still hanging around in the whiskey, and it would turn it off color, like it would kind of turn smoky looking. It didn't change the flavor at all. It just made it very unappealing to uh, the modern consumer. So this one's non-chill filtered, so they did leave some of those fats and lipids in there, but it is 86, uh, 86 proof. Yeah, 43% alcohol by volume. This costs about 15 to 16 bucks, uh, which is a very good deal. And let's see, yeah, that's pretty much about it with this one. And a uh, um, little, okay, little internet research, uh, Jim Beam does not publish their mash bills, but the best guess 
from the internet community is this is a mash bill of 77% corn, 13% rye, and 10% malted barley. Um, so we'll uh, give it a go. All right. We're using uh, fancy uh, Glencairn style glasses. Just uh, got a big kind of big round base, kind of narrows at the neck to trap some of those smells in, just makes it easier to smell. Uh, you can pick these up, set of four about $20, $25 on Amazon, or use whatever you have. Uh, regular old rocks glass, uh, mason jar, red solo cup, coffee mug, whatever you got, uh, use it. So. Ooh, I get that. I get that sharp, sharp corn, corn sweetness. Straight, yeah, straight corn on the nose. A little bit of vanilla there. Got a little vanilla, a little, little slight must, nothing too crazy. A little bit of ethanol uh, kind of smell to it, uh, which is which is funny on a eighty six proofer. Right. Um, now, now the thing is especially if you're using one of these glasses, you don't want to stick your nose right in this bowl and taking a deep breath or you'll fry your nose out. Uh, right. Cause it, it is 86 proof, 43% alcohol. So right. you kind of want to sniff gently. <laughs> so. Yeah. Sniff at your own caution there. No. Yeah. You're right. It, it, it definitely smells like a much, a much different whiskey than is advertised. <laughs> try this mm. good corn a uh, little bit of little bit of rice spice kick in the back there got a decent amount of heat for a6 proof yeah, subtle so, subtle like I don't know if it's granulated sugar or I don't know. It's like the back end, I just get like a, a little bit of sugar, not brown sugar, but just kind of just regular old white cane sugar in the back. It is, it is definitely uh corn front and center on that. Nice and sweet. Um, not off putting at all. No. Uh, Got got a little bit of oak on it at the end, uh, which is uh, really nice. And it's not a not what I would call watered down by any means. No, 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 no. It's nice. You know, it's got a lot of oil. Uh, got a lot of legs coming on the side of the glass there. That's from the non chill filtration. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna act like y'all can see see the oil dripping off <laughs> this thing, but. Um, just a quick note um, with with our with tasting notes, we, these are completely made up. It's all um, it's it's all bullshit. It, it's, yeah, uh, it, it's it's all it's all BS. Uh, we we smell and 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 react to what we think we smell. Because I I'll um, be I'll be honest, and and my wife is the world's uh, probably the the best spokesperson for this camp. She, she has smelled and tasted every single whiskey that I've ever bought. Um, and that is approaching a number of bottles I'm not comfortable sharing. Um, <laughs> and she says every one of them tastes like straight lighter fluid. Um, it, it all tastes like whiskey. It all smells like whiskey. Uh, what, what you do kind of the more of these that you, you drink, the more you taste, you start, I, your mind starts playing tricks on you is what happens. You, you smell it and you're like, oh, that kind of smells like oranges or, that kind of smells like vanilla. Um, <laughs> so there's no, there's no wrong answer. Um, if, no, if you no. taste something that, you know, the label says you should be tasting citrus and vanilla and, you know, baking spice and you taste chocolate and tobacco and toothpaste, uh, that's what you taste. Uh, your, 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 your taste buds are all subjective. Um, it has to, you know, if you, if you had a very spicy lunch, your your taste buds could be acclimated to a certain spice in the afternoon. You never know. Coffee, everything can affect how you taste what you're tasting. Um, so, like I said, we're do not take what we say seriously on on what we taste in these whiskeys. Uh, we're just here to 
give you our thoughts on it and we're having a little fun with it because there there is some I'm not it, it's a little bit above pseudoscience but there is some science and chemistry on why you smell and taste those particular flavors with alcohol reacting to wood sugars in the barrel but that is a rabbit hole that we'll dive down way down the road um but i really enjoyed this um like i said for 15 16 bucks this is a buy all day long it's good it's an easy sipper um great flavor uh, and you can't beat the price and uh you can pretty much rest assured that which whichever uh liquor store you go to will have it um here in florida our big two are abc and total wine um and they both i know for a fact carry uh the repeal batch so um well eric you want to jump into our bonded yeah yeah we'll hit that up all right so here is jim beam bonded has your all uh has all the uh specifications for bonded oh we forgot one thing so if it is a bonded bourbon uh it will have the exact uh warehouse and location that it came from so that was that was part of the deal with the bottled and bond act is you can actually locate where this particular whiskey warehouse came from um so this one says claremont kentucky dsp ky 230 that is where this bottle came from and that is the the number for their distilled spirits permit so yes uh that's kentucky obviously ky um if you're drinking a tennessee whiskey it's going to be dsp tn uh whatever numbers uh we've got a, a lot of local to florida distilleries those are dsp fl uh so kind of funny how that works isn't it i know right um, so this one's going to have a little bit higher proof. Um, this is a hundred proof, 50% alcohol ABV. Um, this will run you about 19 to 20 bucks, give or take where you're at. Um, like I said, reportedly the mash bill is 77% corn, 32% rye, 10% malted barley. Rye number is a good one to keep an eye on. Usually the higher it gets, the more of that peppery floral flavor, the kind of a dill kind of taste comes into things uh big red gum you know cinnamon red hots that type of thing typical with a higher rye um but sometimes i have been fooled by some of these things so we will see Ooh. get a lot more a lot more brown sugar on this one and almost like caramel chews like the little candies yeah Mm. should do just a straight asmr of our uh no our uh reactions just, of just sniffing and moaning bourbon yeah. bourbon bourbon <laughs> porn noises <laughs> coming next to our channel bourbon asmr <laughs> busammer i get almost like a like a almost like an almond not like almond nuts but like almond liqueur like uh amaretto amaretto kind of just a little like yeah of that i can see that it's definitely a more complex palette uh of, of smells than the i get a, i get a i get a slight the, slight nuttiness um like like the honey the honey glazed planters peanuts ever so slightly and of course, vanilla and all that yeah. fun stuff. Yeah, typical bourbon notes. <laughs> Shout out to another good, uh, good whiskey channel there. That's, yeah, a little corn in yeah, there I, too. I, I get a, I get a lot of caramel with this one. Just, uh, yeah, caramel chews, caramel, you know, little hard candies. Little, yeah. I got the I got the corn in the background. It's just a good it's a good balance. I'm gonna try this thing. Now again, if you buy a bottle of Jim Beam bonded and pour yourself a glass and smell it, and it smells like whiskey, that's correct too because it does. Ooh, that is good. Ah, you know, hot take here. 
that's very similar to uh very similar in bite to the first one i get a little bit more to be to of, be 14 percent uh, more um uh, abv i get a little bit more of the and i think it comes from the mash bill and how far off it is from how much they watered it down to honor proof i get more of the the rice spice the and, and what i mean by that is uh if you chew like big red gum those first couple of chews where you're like ah this is spicy uh it's that kind of flavor and i think that gets confused with like the heat from the high proof a lot of times yeah. um i'm not getting a lot of alcohol burn with this i'm getting that that big spice um but the same corn it's very much the same flavor profile oh yeah there's nothing nothing off-putting by that whatsoever um it's it, it it is it is to me the repeal batch if the repeal batch was a honda accord with everything loaded the jim beam bonded is the acura I got gotcha. you. I feel that. Um, so, so for those of you who don't know or know en enough, um, so what happens? Whiskey goes into a barrel at a very high percentage of alcohol. Um, over time, as it ages in the barrel, that the water in that spirit leaves uh, and creates a higher proof or, or percentage of alcohol. So what they've done here is they've taken, let's say, 120, 130 proof barrel uh, spirit at full strength and added enough water to get it down to 100 proof. Um, and then obviously for the, the repeal batch, a little bit more to get it down to 86. Um, so what you do when you water down is you're obviously losing some of the complexity of flavor. So yeah, the the hundred is definitely a step up. It's got a much different mouthfeel. Um, it just feels different. Um, but I like both of them. I couldn't I couldn't be happier to have these on my shelf. For thirty, you know, for thirty eight bucks, tax included. Yeah, bl blows a couple of forty dollar bottles out of the water. <laughs> right. Definitely. I, yeah, I really like that. Um, you know, there's several other great buys, you know, out there, you know, such as these that we'll highlight at a later date. Um, you know, but we really wanted to make a first episode one, you know, where we could share a couple of good bottles to start, you know, to start your collections. If you're just venturing into the hobby or recommend a new daily drinker, you know, if you've been at this for a while, you can start here. Right. You know, we, we both have, uh, and and you can see some of Eric's there in the background. We both have what are considered, you know, quote unquote, higher end bottles or rarer bottles in our collections. Um, but it's bottles like these that you can find and and buy time and time again for just a little bit of money um, and and sip on that uh, that really round out your collection. I think. Um, so we're we're really glad you decided to join us uh, for our very first episode. Uh, of Eric's Drink Whiskey. We hope you've enjoyed it. We hope you've learned something. Um, and uh, if we hope, uh, we want to thank the folks who since our uh, our teaser launch have subscribed to our channel and uh, watched our video. Um, if you shot, have- shot, shot up a couple a couple since, uh, since couple a nice little blast went out there. <laughs> did, did a little social media marketing. Um, be sure to follow us on Instagram at, at Eric's Drink Whiskey. Um, I'll have that up here right down here in the, the video when we post it. Uh, just to see what we've got going on. Um, we, we tend to post kind of what we're drinking on a particular day and post updates about when you can expect to see new content. Um, and then as always, please subscribe to our channel. Um, like our video. That way uh, you'll know when we have new content drop. Um, and again, we are Eric's Drink Whiskey. Until next time, cheers. Cheers.